All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Sabbath service. I am <laughs> laughing because, I, I don't know, I just feel kind of giddy, kind of weird, <laughs> goofy today. <laughs> it's going to be an awesome Sabbath Hello, service. Everybody. Welcome, everyone that's online and everybody watching this message. Um, our ministry is Saved by Truth Ministries. This is our website uh, for you that are watching this for the first time. Uh, today is the second Sabbath of the six months on God's calendar. And first of all, before we get started, I just want to, you know, talk about something I'm grateful for. I just want to just share my gratitude for three things, or three people actually, first, and then all of you. Uh, first of all, my daughter, I'm really super grateful for my daughter because of her heart to want to just love the Lord and really want to be righteous um, in her relationship, and her relationship with God, and, you know, just how much she's grown so much in the last two years. She just had her two-year spiritual birthday Yay. just the other day. She was baptized two years ago, so that was really encouraging. Uh, for her to just see her growing in the faith. And I just love my daughter so much, Jaden, and, and, and I just appreciate you more than you know. And also Maddox, I just want to say Maddox, I am so excited for my son, uh, how every single day he wants to pray. Every day. There's not a day that goes by that he doesn't say pray, pray for us at, you know, when it's time to go to sleep. Or he wants to play with me in basketball, or he wants to do something, but and whenever he goes through a challenge or he's not feeling 100%, he always comes back and repents and ask for forgiveness or, or confesses whatever he's going through. And that's because he's growing to be a spiritual young man. And so I just appreciate you, Maddox. I love you very much so. And my wife, I mean, I don't know where I'd be right now without my wife. Just standing by me through thick and through thin. When I wasn't lovable, when I wasn't, um, you know, kind or wasn't a, a good a, a man or a husband or, or a lot of other things that I probably wasn't at the time. But she was there through thick and through thin. And if it wasn't for her, uh, there'd be no... Stephen, um, as a disciple, probably, by now. And so I just want you to know, Jamie, I love you very, very much. Thank you so much for supporting this mission, supporting the ministry, supporting our family, and taking care of them, denying yourself the way you do, just take care of us. And so I just want you to know I love you very, very much. And then also you guys, all the ministry here that are here watching right now, um, we have people all around the country that are online, and I love all of you, um, Save by Truth Ministry, um, I just want you guys to know that um, I just appreciate all of you um, because of what you guys have been here. All of you have been here through thick and through thin for a long time, um, believing in the message that we've been going through and sharing and that you've been seeing in Scripture, and you've been here faithfully um, from the beginning to the end. And, you know, just 10 years ago, 2010, nine years ago, you know, this message came on uh, my heart and my wife's heart about the Sabbath day, and we didn't understand it, but we decided we were going to follow based on what we saw in Scripture, and we did. And, you know, just one of you came, you know, Gus, and, and then Janet came up right after that, and, and then a few others started coming, and it just started to grow to a small group of people. And we just started doing what we saw. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know why we were doing it, and we were doing it wrong at first. You know, we were honoring the Sabbath based on Saturday at first when we first learned it. Because that's all we knew. We didn't know any different. So we did that. And then once God revealed his true calendar based on, you know, the new moon celebration and, and what we do today, you know, we, we honored that. And God, and it was us alone. You know, when we first started this message um, based on the new moon celebration, it was no one. We couldn't find a single person anywhere online, anywhere on the web, anywhere worldwide that we could find that was honoring the Sabbath based on that. But by faith, we did that. We didn't know why. We didn't know how it made sense. We didn't even understand all the details of it. But we saw what we saw in Scripture, and we obeyed by faith. And nothing else. And you know, I was talking to my wife the other day, and I was just thinking about all the people in the Bible. If you really think about um, Noah, Noah had to build an ark. And he built an ark and built the covenant, which we went over the other day. And he did it by faith. He had no Bible to look at. God talked to him in his sleep, in his dreams, and out of the air. And he went and obeyed by faith. And then you look at Abraham, what Abraham did, um, you know, with his covenant of, you know, the, the uh, circumcision that he had to do for himself at 99 years old and his child at 13 years old. He had to go and do what he did by faith. At that point, no one had been circumcised before because there was no such thing as it at that time. But he, by faith, did what he did because he wanted to be separate. He wanted to be different than everyone else. Because God said he's going to separate his people. And he did. And then he blessed them and said, your children will be numerous as the stars. And by faith, that all came true. And then Moses was called. He was, a, he was one of the ch children of the Pharaoh. 
You know, at that time, you know, the children of the Pharaoh, because you know, the Hebrew Israelite um, baby was put in the Nile, and, and the daughter of the Pharaoh picked him up and took him into the Pharaoh's home. So he had everything. He had all the money. He had all the riches. He was, you know, up in command. But what did he do? He realized who he was by faith. And he said, you know, I don't want all this. I'm willing to give up everything to follow the Lord. And he didn't know it. He didn't have a Bible to read. All he did was he went by faith. He didn't have anybody leading him, telling him to do it. God out of the air or in his dreams told him exactly what to do, and he went by faith and did it. And he went and preached to the Pharaoh, which he could have got killed, stoned instantly. But he didn't by faith, because God said he's going to protect his people. And he went and he went to the Pharaoh. We know the story. And he had ten plagues. Well, you know, and then Passover came and, and they had to put the blood over the door lamb by, by faith so that the, the angel of death would come kill the firstborn. And, and by faith, the Israelites were led out of Egypt. And they went through the Red Sea. And could you imagine Moses standing there with a stick at the end of a sea right in front of him? The, the Egyptians come behind him, here to kill him, right? And they're standing with a couple million people standing there looking at this ocean, this, this big old sea. Like, what the heck am I going to do? But what did Moses do? By faith. He stuck that stick in that water and that thing parted. By faith. And they walked through a dry ground. Do you know what type of faith that takes? There was no Bible. They had to look at. They had nobody to lead. No one was leading them. No one was teaching them anything. It was God in his dreams and out of the air. And in a cloud and a fire. Imagine a fire, you fall on a fire all night, all day. And then a cloud during the day or whatever, vice versa, however it went. Right? Bottom line is, that's called faith right there, right? And then he had a walk up this mountain. I, I can't even imagine walking up a mountain. I'd probably die from heart attack trying to walk the mountain, but him walk up a mountain and go talk to nothing, <laughs> right? God in the air, right? Talk about faith. They had no Bible to read. And then he comes down with two stone tablets, which was the covenant, which was the covenant God made with him. And then they were supposed to obey these laws that had never heard of before. And God put those on the stone tablets and and then they had broke them because the people were sitting down there at the bottom of the hill. They were having a golden calf and, you know, denying themselves. And we went through the same kind of thing, you know, nine years ago. God told us, you know, come out of this, the church that we were at and start honoring these Ten Commandments and the Sabbath day just like that. And, and we did. And we created this ministry, Saved by Truth, because God told us to, by faith, in the same way. And it was no one. It was just a few of us. It was Gus and myself and my wife and... And I, there was a few other people here that are not longer here with us any longer. And, then, and our kids, my son was three years old. My daughter was like five or six or something like that. It's crazy. Seven, eight maybe. But the bottom line is, they, it was just us. Just the family by faith. But God is faithful because, you know, he started teaching us the, the feast days and holy days and all that. And then he started bringing people. Just kind of like Noah built an ark for 100 years. You know, I'm sure that first 90 years of building the ark, it was kind of hard. Kind of like the first nine years of us, you know, building this ark was hard. You know, we had very few following. But then God started bringing a few more. And then a few of you started coming and started honoring this message. And God did this, kind of the same thing here. So I want to I introduce you to some people right now. Um, I want to introduce you to first Richard. Um, actually, uh, Robert, I apologize. This is Robert. I'm going to go ahead and shut some of these down. This is Robert. You can meet Robert. Robert, he's out of Kenya. Uh, Robert is, is teaching the Word of God, uh, and he's been a pastor there, and he leads a lot of people in, in, in Kenya. And you can see his ministry down here. He did a, me a message for us last year. Uh, he, he's you know, teaches a lot of people in the, in the area and goes and preaches to the sick and he goes around the town and, and has a worship message. And last year he taught about, you know, a few hundred people, um, you know, the Sabbath day based on the Feast of Trumpets. And so Robert, again, this year is going to be, you know, doing a message on the Feast of Trumpets um, with St. Mark's Truth Ministry. And he has a flyer that he's going to be passing out um, to people all around his area in Kenya. And then this is George. George, I met George not long ago. George, in the same way, this is George here. And George, same thing, same thing. He's a pastor out there in Kenya. And I want you to uh, get to know George. 
and know who he is. And the same thing, he's a pastor out there, and he will lead the church up there. And he has people all in that area that he serves, and he um, serves the poor out there. He takes care of people, goes around and gives out Bibles, and, and just teaches the message to a lot of people. Children, they have a lot of orphans out there that he serves, and they do it by faith. They have not a lot of money, not a lot of anything, but by faith, um, that's what he does. And so I want you to know and pray for George, because we're going to keep all these people in our prayers. So that's George. Um, he also has a flyer, and he's going to be passing out to thousands over in, in Kenya as well. Kenya wants to be a big place, because a lot of pastors come from Kenya. They love our message. Uh, this is James. James, his new brother, just met recently. Uh, he's been looking at the Sabbath messages, looking at our videos, and he is fired up. I mean, James is fired up. Every day he is um, inspired by what he's been learning uh, through our ministry and through our videos. Uh, he didn't have internet access, so he would just look at it. And so we helped him with some internet access so he could take the message and take it out to his people. And this is his wife. And uh, I don't know how many pictures he has on here, but he has, a, a, he has a ministry out there in, I think he's in Kenya as well. Yeah, this is another group in Kenya. Okay? And so all these people, just so you know, are all honoring the Sabbath day now, based on God's calendar. They've come off Saturday keeping. They've taken their entire ministry off Saturday keeping. Um, and so... That's the next person. The next one I want to share with you is, uh, this is Daniel. Now, Daniel, uh, you talk about fired up. Daniel is the most fired up. Daniel, right now, is on fire for the Lord. Uh, this is him. Uh, he actually has a ministry in Nigeria. Now, it's been a hard time to find someone uh, to, to teach the word in Nigeria, but he has posted his flyer on his wall already. He's doing an event in uh, September, I'm sorry, November, August 30th, actually, he has his own event that he was doing. He changed his whole event to start teaching about the Sabbath and the commandments. And then this is our message that we're going to be teaching, and which is the Ark is, of the Covenant is finished. We are the Ark. And this is his message. He has his own phone number, his email on there, and he posted it on his wall. And he is fired up for the Lord. You have no idea. This guy calls me and talks to me every day. He is fired up to go teach the message. I don't know who all these people are, but it uh, looks like his wife and his child. There it is. Uh huh. And so he is um, inspired in Nigeria, and he is out there, um, you know, spreading this message, you guys. So keep um, Daniel in prayer. And then another one I want to share with you is Dennis. Of course, you guys have met Dennis before. This is Dennis and his crew. Uh, his some of his pastors in, in Kenya again in another area of Kenya, and they're out there teaching the message as well, and they have a flyer that they're going to be passing out, and they're keeping the Feast of Trumpets based on God's calendar this year as well, and uh, he is in Kenya, they have a lot of orphans that um, don't have a lot of, don't have parents, um, you know, that have either died or whatever happened, and, you know, he takes care of all these orphans, and they don't have a lot of money, but they do have a love for the Lord, and they sit there and they teach the word of God and they have the Bible studies for the kids and you know we give them what we can and and God gives them the, the difference <laughs> because um, these kids are, are here and this is uh, Dennis so I want you to keep Dennis in your prayers I want you to understand these are people are all part of your ministry Save by Truth ministry that's what they claim to be at this point um, they've all been baptized into God's church they're part of the body of Christ, but they're preaching in Save My Truth Ministry's name and of whatever their church's name is what as well in their area. And he's in um, Kenya also. Next person I want to introduce you to is Matari. Matari, uh, this gentleman is fired up for the Lord as well. It was cool because last year he started teaching with us and he only had a few people in his ministry. He was really down and discouraged, didn't have a lot of people following him. But now people started coming out of the woodwork to start learning the message because his message started to change and I think Facebook take, um, shut down his page so he doesn't have a lot of pictures on there anymore but he used to have a lot of pictures in his ministry oh this is not him uh, he used to have a lot of pictures in his ministry there but um, they're not there any longer because he had to set up a whole new page but it's really awesome uh, Matari is on fire for the Lord and again on the Feast of Trumpets this year he will be teaching the lessons out there uh, for people to see and learn 
And then, of course, this is Ra. Ra is out of India now. And now we're over to India, and this is Ra. Ra's been with us for a few years now. And Ra, again, hosts a whole bunch of orphans. And he, didn't, like you said, he didn't have a lot of money or have a lot of anything when we met him. But, you know, he had a lot of heart. I'll tell you that. This dude loves the Lord. Uh, we could barely communicate at first, but now we communicate great. You know, he, he didn't speak a lot of good English, but, you know, he speaks great English now. And he supports these kids, and, and we, um, you know, do our best to support them. And they love us. Uh, the kids speak to them. Our kids speak to them on a consistent basis. And, you know, he's out there teaching the Word of God. Here's Ryan and, and some of his pastors. And he has about a few hundred pastors that he's now led to off the Sabbath, off Sunday keeping and now keeping the Sabbath day based on God's calendar. And he has hundreds of them that he has taught over the last few years. Uh, so that's um, Ra. And then we have Mano. And Mano is another brother out here in, in India, a different part of India. And this is Mano and a lot of his pastors. And again, he has hundreds of pastors that have come off the Sunday keeping and are now keeping the Sabbath day based on God's calendar. And he's going around town with our flyer, taking it town to town and getting everyone on the Feast of Trumpets in their particular area teaching the Word of God. He's printing out the messages and he's taking it to the people. And so um, this is what the Lord is doing in his area. And it's really encouraging, you know, when you start to see, you know, the message that he taught, he's teaching. And I think one of these is, is one we were teaching. Actually, this is the event that we just did a, week, a few weeks ago with him. So he actually had all these pastors and people there from different tribal areas in the area come. We fed them. We taught them the message. And this is right after I taught them um, the message of the kingdom of God, and, and we fed them based on your donations, based on your giving, and what you've done uh, for these people. So I want you to know, this was a picture right after our event of the couple hundred people that were there uh, learning the message of the kingdom of God. The only way this is possible is because of you and your sacrifice and what you've been willing to do to give to the ministry and be here. So that's um, Mano, and then the last person, of course, I want to share is Praveen. And this is Praveen. Praveen's been with us again for a couple years. He was the first person in India to come aboard with us. After Praveen, then everyone else that you see started to follow suit. And Praveen has been in India. He's, man, this brother is on fire for the Lord. He's the one who takes his motorcycle out, and man, this dude goes out and shares his faith. I mean, he goes town to town sharing his faith. And this is, again, a message of him. He's looking at me on the, t on the computer screen as I'm teaching uh, a few hundred people in their area. Um, and this is when they're, we fed them after. I don't know what those are. I'm sorry, chicken. Chicken. <laughs> those are chicken. See, we don't eat chicken like that. But that, it looks like chicken. <laughs> and then um, uh, this is Praveen on his motorcycle going town to town. And it's his family. And we're doing another message. It was going to happen on the 17th, which was tomorrow. But we had to reschedule it to Monday because um, there's a protest out there. and There's no buses, no cabs, no nothing. So they don't have any transportation to get the people to the message. Uh, but they are, uh, we are going to be teaching a few hundred more people this week before the Feast of Trumpets. So because he's lining people up to come to the feast day. And so I just want you guys to see who you're serving. And, you know, the donations that you guys have been giving... Um, has really helped out a lot of people. Uh, that's just them. Um, also, shoot, I forgot to, I, I gotta upload this here. Let me, let me do this real quick. I want to show you one thing. Um, yeah, I can show you this. There's a bunch of other people that are now starting to honor the Sabbath day. And these are some of the names of the people that just got baptized or getting baptized or studying the Bible. Jim Park there at the bottom, his name is in Mission Viejo. He's the gentleman out here in California that wants to meet with me on Tuesday. He runs a ministry here in the United States. And these are just some. There's a lot more. Just so you know, this is a very small group of the people that I te talk to and talk to every and teach every single night um, on Facebook. So I just want you to know um, your message is going around the world in a big, 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 big way. I want to show you this. This is our Facebook campaign. Our Facebook campaign, uh, this is, we've invested about $600 that we have sitting there um, to go towards this message to go around the world. Right now, we've 
have 268,000 impressions on this particular message. This is a video that people get to click on and watch right on Facebook. Um, Facebook doesn't want people to link off onto our YouTube channel. So we had to put the video right on Facebook. So the video about the covenant, about the covenant of the Lord and the Sabbath day and how all the feast days work and everything, 126,000 people it reached. In other words, it got on their wall so that they could see the message. We've had over 10,000 play click-throughs. That means over 10,000 people clicked the video. How much of it they watched, I don't know. That's not my job. My job is to plant the seeds, and that's what we've been doing, planting these seeds. And then I have another video that talks about um, something else similar, and 28,000 more people saw that one, and 9,000 people clicked that in post engagement, either liked it, said they loved the program, or how it worked, or whatever. We haven't had a single negative comment on any other video or the, the, the post. That is phenomenal for this message. That means this message is now being adopted. See, before when we first started this message, we got opposition, didn't we? We had people fighting us. Right, Jaden? We had people that didn't want to hear the message. We had people that didn't want to hear what we were talking about. But now, it's now starting to be adopted. I get amens and hallelujah. Thank you so much for the message. All of the time. Because just like when Noah was building that ark, no people didn't want to hear that, that ark. But I guarantee you they wanted to be on that ark when that flood started coming. And people right now today can see the flood coming. They can see the signs of the time. They know what's going on. So they're thankful and they're open now to hear this message. Because they can see the deception. So I just want you to know that your donations and what you've given to Save Our Children Ministry has tremendously helped spread this word around the world. But we're not done yet. This message is going to, this is only the 15th of the month. We got another two weeks worth of message going out so we can see this message going to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people between now and the end of the month. Now why is God doing that? I don't know. I don't know why God's doing it. I do know that uh, at the end time, God says he's going to call his people back to covenant. And that's what the video of the covenant was all about. And so what we're going to do right now is just go through just a few scriptures. This is not a full-on message today, uh, but we're going to do just a few scriptures, just so we can talk about it. Because in two weeks, the Feast of Trumpets will be here. And just so you know, we are the only group worldwide that is going to be honoring the Feast of Trumpets on September the 1st, because everyone else in the world, including the people that call themselves Jews and that follow their teaching, are going to be honoring the Feast of Trumpets in October. And we've been honoring the Feast of Trumpets now for nine years. We have not yet ever seen a Feast of Trumpets in October. It's always been in August or September. And again, this year it is in August, September, because we saw the barley of Eve on the day it was supposed to be. So God has now completely separated us out from everyone who honors the Sabbath day or who calls themselves Jews in the world or calls themselves God's people that are not honoring the feast day on the right day. And he's called us out. Let's read the verse of the day. It says, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Amen. Wow, what a powerful scripture for this time. You know, I love these verses of the days because every single week God puts the right verse for the message. And, you know, that's what we need to be looking at right now. Do you have anything in your life that we need to purify ourselves from? Is there any sin that's unconfessed that you need to get open with? Do you have bitterness in your heart against someone? Because the Bible says if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. Do you have um, any unforgiveness of family members or people that, you know, maybe have done you wrong in the past that you need to get open with and forgive? Maybe you just need to forgive from the heart because maybe you can't touch them right now. Are there anything that you've done that you need to repent of, that you need to change your ways? I recommend now is the time to do it because the Lord is coming and he's coming soon. So let's read a couple of scriptures about that. We're going to read Genesis 6. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you this PowerPoint. I can find it here. Where did it go? Right 
right side here. So this message is talking about like in the days of Noah. We're not going to go through a whole message on that. But in, in the days of Noah, there was an ark, and God built an ark. So just visualize this. Years and years and years ago. Well, what is that? Six, almost 6,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago or so. Um, the, the world was, was around, and, and all these people were on earth. And there was a lot of bad stuff going on earth. You know, we know that the Nephilim came and the, the angels had children with the, the women. And, and then no, God told Noah to build this ark. Visualize this. Imagine building a boat that big back then. <laughs> you understand? Imagine building a boat that big back then with no modern tools, no modern anything. How did he do it? I don't know. You can see how small these people are compared to this boat. That's a big boat. And this boat right now is of size. That's how big the boat was. Because he built it with the same measurements that Noah did. That is unbelievable. So imagine having a boat that big in the middle of nothing, in the middle of the desert, right? You would think he's a lunatic. But he wasn't a lunatic because we know what happened. Hindsight is 2020. We know that there was a flood that came. So we're going to look at these scriptures today. You can write those scriptures down. Genesis 6, 1 through 8. So let's look at that. So we're going to go through some scripture now. Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about this. Genesis 6. This is kind of like a precursor to the actual... Feast, Trump, Feast of Trumpets message. It says, When human beings began to increase in number on earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of human were beautiful, and they married any one of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. I want to stop right there because um, this was one of the things that really impacted me back in the day. It said, you know, it said, that, you know, the, the sons of God saw that the daughter was human. And now we know that those were the Nephilim, the, the, actually the angels that came down and had babies with women, and they grew children from them, which we'll see in a second. But it says that their days will be 120 years. Uh, we now know that the 120 years it was talking about was 120 what's called jubilee years. A jubilee year is 50 years. 120 times 50 years is 6,000 years. And we now know that from Adam till now was 6,000 years. We have a map on our wall of the entire 6,000 years from the time of Adam till now. So it says man's time will only be mortal for 120 years, which is 120 jubilee years. It says the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. When the sons of God went to the daughters of human, they had children by them. They were heroes of old, Men of renown. In other translations, it says they were giants. That's what it says. And they were giants. And we've, we now know that we've seen giants. We've seen some of the mountains that are actually giants that are laying down on, on the ground. We've seen trees that are, you know, that look like mountains, but they're actually trees. That somebody cut those trees down. And they were giant trees, gigantic trees. And we know that those Nephilims were giant too. And we're not going to go through the whole study on that today. But... I just want you to see the preference of before Noah's done. It says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of every thought of human heart was only evil all the time. That's, a, that's pretty bad. It says, Every inclination of thought of human heart was only evil all the time. That's pretty bad, isn't it, Jacob? That's pretty gnarly to, for, the, for people's uh, mindset and everything to be that evil all the time. You understand? So, that's how do you think it is now? You think things are getting bad now? Yeah. Oh, things, in my opinion, are much worse than it was in the days of Noah. Much worse. And those giants are back, by the way. It says, The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe out from the face of the earth all human race that I have created. And with them, animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them. 
But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now this is a very important passage for all of us. This is a very important passage for all of us. Because it says that God was going to wipe out everyone. But one family found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Not two families, one. And his children. And so all of them we know got on the ark. And they were saved through water, which the Bible says in 1 Peter 3. And that water represents baptism that now saves us. Now, today. But the big thing that I want you to see here is that it says that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And why is that important to you? Because it talks about it in the future that it's going to be like in the days of Noah. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But the Lord wants us to understand that this situation is happening again right now. The situation that happened back then is happening again. Those same angels have fallen down. We, we've seen studies on that. We've seen what's going on in the world. They, they're back here again. And they're doing the exact same thing they did back then. And so God is going to do the exact same thing. Let's look at a couple scriptures on that. Let's see. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, it says, start in verse 1. Now, this is our time. That was Noah's time. So let's look at what the Bible says about our time. It says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but not denying his power, have nothing to do with such people. If you really look at each one of these words and each one of these little phrases, that's what's absolutely happening today. It's unbelievable the amount of um, crime and stuff that's going on, especially in the United States. It is around the world, but it's unbelievable what's happening today. And when you turn on the news, you, I mean, I see stuff that I don't even share just because it's so disgusting and so outrageous that this is absolutely happening right now, right now, today. And so we got to understand that this is the time that we're living in today. And that time is going to you know, cause a, a reaction. We're going to see that in a moment. But let's look at 2 Peter. 2 Peter. 2 Peter 3. Now I'm talking about the day of the Lord. On the Feast of Trumpets, we're going to talk a lot more about the Day of the Lord. But it says, the Day of the Lord. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as a reminder to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. So the reason for this letter, I want you to understand, this is an encouraging letter. Just like he wrote it to them, we're talking to you about that same letter. All of you listening to this message right now. This is designed for a reason. God wrote this letter to stimulate you towards wholesome thinking. Not towards worldly thinking or discouraging thinking or down or depressing thinking. It's towards wholesome thinking. Let's keep reading. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Now what command was that? Keep the commandments. We know that. Right? So let's keep reading. Above all, you must understand. So this is important for us to understand. Whenever the Bible says above all, in other words, above anything you think, anything you believe, anything you've learned in the past, anything you think you know, whenever it says that and you must understand something, you need to listen to the next point. It says that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing 
and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? He promised. That's what's happening right now all over Facebook, all over the world. People say, oh, Jesus isn't coming. He's not coming anytime soon. People are saying that for the last 10 years. People are saying that for the last 20 years. See, but you've been preaching this message forever. He ain't coming anytime soon. That's what people say all day long. I get that all the time. Even though I get a lot of good press, good message on there, I get a lot of people scoffing, saying he's not coming. This is what scoffing means. Scoffing means he's saying they're not, he's not coming. Let's look at what it says. It says they're following their own desire. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on since the beginning of creation. So that's what the scoffers say. So when you hear someone saying that, you can consider them a scoffer based on the scriptures. But look what it says. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's words, the heaven came to being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters, also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. That was the flood of Noah we just read. By the same word, the present heaven and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. Remember, God gave a rainbow. He said he's never flooding the earth again. He's not. He's going to do it by fire on the day of judgment for the ungodly. Let's keep reading. So here's the part you want to remember, everyone, listening to this message. Here's what you need to wake up for right now and be pay a close attention to. He says, but do not forget one thing, dear friends. Will the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Why is that important? Well, God just gave us a prophecy in the days of Noah. He said man's only going to be around for 120 years. I just shared it with you, 120 years is 50, a jubilee year, biblically, is 50 years. 50 years times 120 is 6,000 years, right? And a day is like a 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is like a day. Now, if you really think about it, God said he made the heavens and earth in six days, and he rested on the seventh day. A day is like a 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is like a day. Those six days of creation are the 6,000 years that we've been living up to this point. So we are in the last days mm -hmm. because we see the scoffers all around. And he's telling us that a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The last thousand years is called the thousand year reign. That's when we reign with the Lord for a thousand years, which we believe is happening soon. Very, very soon. Let's keep reading. Verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. See, because to God, it's only six days. It's no big deal. To us, it seems like a long time, 6,000 years. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to the knowledge of repentance. That's why I believe he's getting all these videos out. That's why he's getting this message out to the people that want to hear it. That's why people are coming, kind of like with Noah with the ark. When he had an ark, what did he do? God didn't send Noah out hunting for all these animals. No, God brought the animals. He brought the people. He brought the animals that were going to be saved on the ark. And I believe God right now is bringing the people that are going to be saved on this ark. Because the ark held the covenant. And I believe we are the ark. That's holding the covenant. The people that are honoring the Lord are the ark. Because the covenant was the Ten Commandments. Let's keep reading. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. And the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. You do not want to be here during that time. You want to be on the ark. Just like you didn't want to be in the ocean at the time of the flood. You wanted to be on the ark. Let's keep reading. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be? So now he's talking to you. Let's listen to this message. How should you be right now? This is how you need to be. It says you ought to live holy and godly lives. 
as you look forward to the day of God and speed is coming. That's how we need to be. We need to be more godly. We should be asking ourselves, how can I be more godly every day from this point on? What can I do more for the Lord? How can I give more for God? How can I give more to the message? How can I tithe more so that more people can come to the Lord? How can I go share my faith more often? How can I go preach the word? How can I go post more messages on Facebook if I need to? What can I do more? We need to be more godly as we see the speed coming. Not less godly. Not go away and do our own thing. We need to be with the body. The body is a unit. It's made up of many parts. Not all parts are one. You understand? We need to be together. And that's why this Feast of Trumpets, I pray that you guys are all planning to come to the Feast of Trumpets. If you need help, let us know. We'll find a way. You need to be here because the body needs to be together. This is not the time to be separate. Look what it says. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt away in the heat. But keep me with this promise. We're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. That's what we're looking forward to. <laughs> you understand? Isn't that awesome? He's telling you when he's coming, he's telling you the new heaven, new earth is coming right after this point. He says right after 6,000 years, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day. He says that's what's coming. When people are scoffing, saying, when is he coming? Which is happening right now. When all this is happening, this is who we need to be. This is what we need to be thinking about. This is our hearts that we need to have right now. So, there, so then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. In other words, if you have sin in your life, if you've done something that you're ashamed of, if you've done something that you know you need to confess and get open with, you better do it now. Because you don't want to be sitting here when the Lord comes. Knowing you have stuff in your heart that you haven't got open with. Knowing that you're concealing sin. Because you will be sitting here. You've got to understand. This is the reason why he's telling us to do this. He says make every effort. He didn't say make a little effort. He said make every effort to be found spotless. That doesn't mean perfect. That means spotless. In other words, you're free of unconfessed sin. That means you're obedient to the commandments. That means you're obedient to his Sabbath day. You've forgiven people if you need to forgive. This is so important. So that you can be peace with him. It says, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. What that means is that because he's given you time to repent, that's what grace is. Grace is time to repent. See, back in the day, there was no grace. You get stoned if you break the Sabbath day. You get stoned immediately if you sinned. If you committed adultery, you got stoned instantly. There was no grace. God gives you time to repent, get open, confess, repent. See, back then, there was no grace. It says, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother, Paul, also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking to them of these matters. His letters concern things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do other scriptures to their own destruction. Kind of like when sometimes they read Colossians 2, and it says, Do not let anybody judge you by a Sabbath day or a new moon celebration or what you eat or drink. People ask me that question all the time. Well, what about that scripture? Does that mean we don't have to obey the Sabbath? No, it means don't let anybody judge you because you obey it. I don't let anybody judge us because we obey it. And we don't judge anybody because they don't. That's what that means. But people are so ignorant and so arrogant thinking that that scripture, that one scripture tells you you don't have to obey the Sabbath day. That's stupid. It doesn't even make sense. But that's what the Bible says. It says, therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, what does it mean by forewarned? What does that mean, if you think about it? If you're forewarned that a, a, a tornado's coming, what should you do? You should buckle down the hatches and get in the 
in the thing, right? Get down in the basement. If you're forewarned that a hurricane's coming, what should you do? You should probably batter, you know, bolt up the windows and or leave town or something. Go get into a shelter. Go prepare, right? Right. If you've been forewarned that you know a gunman's coming into the mall, what should you do? You should probably go hide, get out of the mall, go a different direction, exit stage left, right? You should do something. You need to prepare. The Bible just said, since you have been forewarned, he's not talking to the rest of the world, Bible disciples, you Israelites. He's not talking to them. He's talking to you. He's talking to you watching this message right now. If God brought you to watch this message, he's talking to you. He says, since you have been forewarned, be on your God so that you may not be carried away by the arrows of lawlessness and fall from your secure position. See, right now, your position is secure. But if you don't take this message to heart and the Lord comes on a feast day that's coming near you, if he comes on a feast day and you're not ready, you will be carried away by the lawlessness from your secure position. That's what the Bible is telling you. None of us has a free ticket. <coughs> not me, not my wife, not my kids, nobody. We don't have free tickets. You understand? We all have to do the same thing. And we all have been forewarned. Verse 18, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both for now and forever. Amen. So that's what we need to be doing over the next few weeks. We need to be growing in our grace and in our knowledge. Knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God. If I were you this next two weeks, I would be pouring in in my reading of scripture. I would be watching some of the videos we've put. I'd go back and watch the, 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 the Purifiers video on, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. I would go back and watch the covenants and make sure you understand. And make sure, you, and go look at your life. And I would really go after it in a big way right now. Because this is the time. Matthew 24. I'm going to start down in verse 36. You guys all know what's happening up here. The signs of the times. So you guys can read through all Matthew 24. We're going to just shoot right down to verse 36. Because it talks about, but if, about that day or hour, no one knows. Not the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, People were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage up until the day Noah entered the ark and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be with the coming of the Son of Man. Let's stop right there. This is a very important point because a lot of people um, don't understand that sentence about about that day nor hour, no one knows. Not even the angel in heaven or the Son or only the Father. Well, if you really study it out, we've studied this out, that's actually talking about a Hebrew wedding. Because at that time, the, the, the father would go and get the bride, and the husband would stay away for a period of time, and, and it was a process. I'm not going to go through that today. I'm not going to go through that today. But what I am going to go through is just to understand that this was a, a wedding. If you know what he's talking about, marriage and giving a marriage, he's giving us hints here. But it says about that day and hour, no one knows. See, the reason why no one knows is because this day happens to land on a specific day. And we believe it could be the Feast of Trumpets. Because that day lands on one of two days. Because the Feast of Trumpets is the only feast day that lands on the, on the new moon celebration. And the new moon celebration, no one knows when that day is. Because it could be one of two days. So that could be the day that no man knows. But we also know that there's other dates, like the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement's another feast day. 
That lands on one of two days because it starts on the 9th and it goes to the 10th. So that's one of two days it can be. That's another feast day that's coming up that's unfulfilled. Then there's the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is a seven-day feast. All of those are days that no man knows because he can come one of any of those days. We just saw last week that Moses, the ark, landed on the top of the mountain on the 17th day of the seventh month, which happens to be smack dab in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles. So we don't know when the Lord is coming. We really don't. And I don't know. I'm not claiming to know. But this is what I do know, is that the Lord is coming. I don't know if he's coming this year. I pray he is. I know the 400-year prophecy is fulfilled based on Scripture. I know that the Lord says all these signs are here. I know that the Lord says he's coming in 6,000 years. And we're at about 6,000 years right about now. And the day that no man knows is the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, or the Feast of Tabernacles. But we're going to be prepared for all of them. We're going to be prepared for all of them. And I hope you are too, because on the Feast of Trumpets, which is in two weeks, it could be on the first, it may be on the second. We don't know. We're preparing on the first, just in case. Because if he comes on the first, then we're prepared. If he doesn't come on the first, or if the Feast of Trumpets doesn't land on the first, then we'll be prepared for the second. But this is so important for us to understand this scripture. Let's keep reading. Verse 40, it says, Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other left. Just like it was in the days of Noah. See, in the days of Noah, eight were taken, the other were left to go through the flood. The exact same thing's going to happen. So that's why he forewarned us to be prepared. It says, therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful, servant, wise, faithful and wise servant, who his master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them food at the proper time? So the Lord is saying, who is this servant? Who is this person that's given the people the food at the proper time? It says it will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. In other words, giving food at the proper time, meaning giving not necessarily just food, it can mean just giving the knowledge of the truth, spreading the message, planting the seed in your farm. See, what do we plant in farms? We plant food in our farm. And you all have a farm. And he says it, should be, it will be good for us doing it when he returns, not before he returns. On the day he returns, we should be giving food at the proper time. And that's why we're investing the money that we're investing. That's why we're giving everything we got to, to the feast. That's why we're helping the message go spread around the world. Because we're giving food at the proper time. So when he returns, he'll find us doing so. Verse 47. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked. Now here's the definition biblically of a wicked servant. He says to himself, my master's staying away a long time. In other words, Stephen said this for the last nine years. He ain't coming anytime soon. It's been like this for the last 40 years. He ain't coming anytime soon. I know when he's coming. I don't believe this. I believe my way is right. He says, then he begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards. Now remember, beating a fellow servant doesn't mean physically beating them. Beating it could be beating them with your words. Beating them in your heart. Remember, murder is not necessarily killing someone anymore. It just means angry with your brother. So beating a fellow servant doesn't necessarily mean physically beating them. It can mean beating them up mentally. Be not supporting them could be beating your fellow servants. We just showed you brothers that are on the front line right now that are leading people out there. They have nothing. And you know what? Beating them could be just not supporting them and helping them and doing what you can with what you have. It says, verse 50, the master of that servant will come on a day that he does not expect them. 
and an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him to the place of the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What that's telling you is that how would it come if, if you know the day right now, the Feast of Trumpets, how would you not know? Well, it's because the Lord will blind you and will shut down so you can't see the Sabbath anymore. I know people right now that have started honoring the Sabbath day, that started honoring the feast days, that don't remember when it is anymore, that all of a sudden it went back to Saturday all of a sudden, that went back to Sunday keeping, that went back to all kinds, that, that, that honored Christmas and Easter again. I know people that started honoring the Sabbath day and for the, something was going on in their heart that they can't even see it anymore because the God, God will blind them where they can't see it. This is the reason why we need to be doing what the Lord told us to do. This is the reason why God is calling us to be right with him. So let's look at the last scripture, Galatians 3. Because we are all children of the Lord. We are all children of God. Well, some of us are children of God. And if you want to be a child of God, then you, there's things that need to be done by you and by the Lord. And look what it says. Verse 23. It says, before the coming of this faith. And what is the coming of this faith we're talking about? It's when the Lord is coming to get us, take us home. It says, before the coming of this faith, that the Lord was our salvation. Before all this happened, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until faith that was to come would be revealed. See, back in the day, they were locked up under the law, under the, the rules and regulations of the law. That's what they were going to have to be saved through. But because of Jesus... We now all have the ability to be right with him. It says, so the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. See, back then they had to do certain things. They had to kill a, a ram. They had to put blood on the door frames. They had to do all kinds of different things to be saved. Now, we're justified by our faith, but faith and deeds have to go together. It said, now this faith has come, we're no longer under the guardian. But that has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are still the covenant of the Lord that God put on our hearts. It says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. So all of you that are watching right now, if you're watching this message and you have not been baptized in water for the forgiveness of your sins in Christ, you're not a child of God from God's perspective. So what you need to do right now is repent and go be baptized and wash your sins away calling on his name and keeping the Sabbath day holy and being prepared on the feast when he could come. Look what it says. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seeds and heirs according to the promise. And what was the promise that God gave Abraham? That his family will be descendants of slaves and they will come out with great possession. And that's what's going to happen. And we believe that this feast season could be the year that the Lord comes to take his people to the kingdom of God. Let's end it off in prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you so much for the day. Thank you so much for this message, God. I'm so encouraged and so inspired by all you're doing around the world, Father. Thank you so much for allowing us to be able to give what we have. The little money that we have, the little savings that we have, we can give to the people that need it, that are on the front lines, Father, that are willing to go out there and sacrifice in the rain, shine, sleet, or hail to go preach your word, Father. And I just want to pray for all the brothers that are out there in India and Africa and, and in South America and anywhere else in the world that are hearing this message, Father. I want to pray for the tens of thousands that have seen the video or that are starting to watch it or that are coming to it, Father. I pray it touches the hearts that need to hear the message so that they can be saved, Father. They can um, come to the ark, God, 
the ark is not just here in Orange County, Father. The ark is being built all around the world because the ark are the people of God that are carrying the commandments, Father. So I just want to pray that today that you can allow all of us to be in prayer today. All of us could give our heart, give any money that we have that we can support this mission around the world. Give any time or any effort or any post that we if you put on their hearts that they can spread this message to whoever they need, Father, so that more and more and more people can make it to the kingdom of God. We love you. We thank you so much for this day. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.